Thanks for joining me, everyone. Today we're going to tie, tie this articulated brown. It's a pretty cool fly. It's, uh, it's generally a killer fly where there's a lot of uh, brown trout in the water. Uh, what we're, I'm doing here is I'm just tying in some ginger colored or champagne colored flash in the tail section. So we're tying the back end of the fly first. Now I'm going to add what I call uh, feathers off of a chickaboo cape. These are the bottom feathers uh, and uh, they work very well. I'm just going to wind these in and I want them to be parallel with the hook. Also notice that I've cut the tip section out of those. A little tricky to put on and, and keep them straight or uh, running alongside the hook shank. But what you do is one loose wrap and then tighten it down. Wind forward a little bit, uh, snip off the ends. And there you have it. Those feathers are going to give a swimming action tail fins. Those are going to be the tail fins of the uh, of the fish, the bait fish. Actually, this is going to emulate a small brown trout. Now we're going to tie in the marabou. Tie it in tip first, and then we're going to palmer it forward. Palmering marabou uh, takes a little bit of practice, but uh, after you tie three or four of them, you'll get on to it. I like to tie on this fly the tail section relatively heavy and with two marabou feathers, one tan, one brown, it'll give us a nice mottled look. And give the fly a lot of action. Just continue to stroke the feathers back. Keep preening as you make your wraps. Now we're going to tie it down, pull out some of the trapped fibers so that we can get a good clean tie down point. Now we're going to continue to stroke the fibers back as we wind the thread back towards the point of the hook. And you'll want to go till up to about an eighth of an inch from the point of the hook. Right about there. Now we're going to tie in a brown schloppen feather. Schloppen's a great feather. It's uh, it's cheap, easy to work with, has nice long fibers, gives a lot of life to the fly. It's a little stiffer than uh, than marabou and it's, it holds the water, moves water a little better. We're also tying in here a piece of uh, oh, sparkle chenille. I like to use the yellow uh, from Orvis. It's called, uh, I believe, uh, Yummy Yellow. and uh, the yellow gives matches the uh, underbelly of a brown trout a little better than this. But I was out of the yellow, so we have to make do. I'm going to palmer that schlop and feather forward. About five turns should do it.
you'll notice I'm not real concerned with how the cleaning up the head on this part of the fly because it's uh, it's going to get covered over anyway. Okay. Looks pretty good. Doesn't look like we have anything trapped in there. I'm going to add some glue and do a little whip finish. I like to whip finish into the glue whenever possible. Now we're going to do the front part of the fly. We're just going to join the back fly that we just tied to a Gamakatsu B10S number two hook using the beetle on wire in 15 thousandths, I believe we have. I use 18 thousandths as well. It's uh, pretty cheap. You can get it in uh, your local craft shop or maybe. I don't know, Walmart or Kmart or one of those places. It's uh, This happens to be seven strand stainless wire and I have never lost a fish as a result of this type of a connection. A lot of people glue uh, this as well as wrap, but I haven't glued uh, this joint for probably oh, two years and I haven't uh, had any issues with it at all. These Gamakatsu hooks are, are really great hooks. Uh, I do a lot of bottom bouncing with some of these flies and consequently the uh, hooks doll up. I carry a sharpening stone, but these Gamakatsu hooks seem to stay sharp just forever. That's the good news. Bad news is, is sometimes you get one in your ear. Just adding a little bit of flash like we did on the back part of the fly. Now we're going to palmer forward again just like we did on the back part of the fly and I'm going to go into hyperspeed here just to get us through it. Uh, if you want to see how this is done in a little slower speed you can go back and watch the first part of the video. Here I'm just, uh, just like before, winding it back, creating a nice tapered body. Notice the yellow beads. It also helps to emulate the butter belly of a brown. Adding the chenille. This, this would, again, would be yellow if I had it. Orvis has the yellow yummy color that uh, that works pretty well, but this will work. Palmer the schlop and feather forward. You gotta love those schlop and feathers. They're cheap, add great body, and I think they have just a perfect amount of stiffness that adds some bulk to the fly, but not too stiff. Now we're getting ready to do the, uh, the head and the gill portion of the fly. I'm using some Senyo laser dub here. It's great stuff. If you haven't tried it, get some. This is going to be the gill portion of the fly. And you notice I, I just simply pulled two fair amounts of, uh, of the dubbing 
And now I'm going to fit the fish skull head to make sure that I've got enough room and then it fits on there nicely and it does so we'll go ahead and add some glue slide the head on and now we're going to add a thread dam that will help hold the fish head in place some whip finishes add a spot of glue spot for each eye socket now we're ready to add the eyes going to show you a little trick on how to put these eyes on. A lot of people fumble around with that super glue and with their fingers try to apply the, the glue and it, they get all stuck and sticky and their fingers get stuck together. I like to put the eyes right on the edge, right on the end of a bodkin or a toothpick. And once you have it down there you can just, you know, just press it into place and do the same thing on the other side. All done. With the material used in this fly, it has movement like you wouldn't believe. Uh, the marabou, the articulation, and that, uh, that fishy tail, this fly just moves on its own. Dead drift it, strip it, swing it. It's a great fly. Give it a try and good luck.